By the end of this video, you'll find that it's easier to generate images like these on Midjourney than it is to find and purchase similar images on stock image websites. Not only will this save you quite a bit of money, but it's an opportunity to start using unique images that can't be found anywhere else on the web. Over the next few minutes, we're gonna go over everything you need to know to go from beginner to pro with Midjourney. We're gonna look at exactly what Midjourney is, how you can get started with it, how you can access the free trial and start generating images, as well as a few of the most commonly used parameters, such as the aspect ratio parameter and the seed image parameter as well. Then we're gonna look at a little bit of prompt inspiration. That way you can be on your way generating some incredible images. If you've used Midjourney before, you'll definitely learn something new in this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that now. Let's get started. So what is Midjourney? Midjourney is a text to image generator, which allows you to type in a simple text prompt and generate a pretty amazing image. It's powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning and has been trained on hundreds of millions of images across the web. You may have heard of similar text to image generators such as Stable Diffusion and Dolly. All three of these, relatively speaking, do the same thing but they were all trained on different data sets and have different algorithms powering the generative process. So you will get different results with each one of them. Midjourney has no doubt become the most popular text to image generator out there. And many people argue that it's the easiest to use and generates the highest quality images. Midjourney offers a free trial and a few different subscription tiers. For most people, the basic plan at $10 is plenty. That will generate you around 200 images and considering the fact that most stock image websites charge upwards of $50 for 10 images, there's no question that Midjourney is a much better value. To start using Midjourney, you'll need to add the Midjourney server to your Discord. To get started, just go to midjourney.com and click on either join the beta or sign in. This will add the Midjourney server to your Discord account. And if you don't already have a Discord account, you can go ahead and sign up for one now. Once you're logged into Discord, you'll see the Midjourney server over on the left-hand side of the screen. It's the one with the little sailboat icon. If you've never used Discord before, it can be a little intimidating at first, but it's actually really easy to use. It's essentially just an instant messaging platform. On the left-hand side of the screen, you have the different chat groups that you're a part of. In Discord, these are called servers. And then once you click on a server, you'll see the different channels and the different threads within that server. To generate images with Midjourney, you're basically sending instant messages to a chatbot, which is then replying with images. Let's go ahead and try it out. Once the Midjourney server has been added to your Discord, you automatically have access to the free trial. To start using the free trial, you just need to find one of the channels that says newbies. This is where all of the newcomers to Midjourney can start generating images for free. So you will see a lot of other images from other users within this channel. To generate an image with Midjourney, you simply just click on the message box at the bottom of the screen and then type in forward slash imagine. This is letting Midjourney know that you're ready to generate an image. Then just follow that with your prompt. In this example, mine is tropical beach. Then press enter. And when you are in the newbies channel, you'll be seeing a lot of messages from other people. And it can sometimes be difficult to find your generated image. In that case, you just wanna click on the inbox icon in the upper right hand corner, then click on mentions. And that's where you'll see all of your messages with the Midjourney bot. From there, you can just click on your generated image. Every time that you generate an image with Midjourney, it'll create four variations of your prompt. If you'd like to use one of those images, you can either upscale it or create more variations. In this example, I'd like to create more variations of the third image, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on V3. These are the variations of the third image. And from here, if you'd like to use one of these and have a higher resolution, you can upscale it. I'm gonna go ahead and upscale the second image. Once you upscale an image, you can further communicate with the Midjourney bot by reacting with emojis. Two of the most commonly used reactions in Midjourney include the X emoji, which will completely delete your image and message from Midjourney altogether, and the envelope emoji, which will send your image to your DMs and also provide a seed number, which we'll be using as one of our parameters in the next section. Parameters can be added on to the end of your prompt, giving you further control over the final results. The three most commonly used parameters in Midjourney include AR, 
which allows you to adjust the aspect ratio of the image, the no parameter, which is a negative prompt and tells Midjourney what to exclude from the image, and the seed parameter, which allows you to provide a starting image with your prompt and basically just serves as a starting point for the image that Midjourney is gonna generate. Let's go ahead and try a few of these out. I'm gonna ask Midjourney to create an image of mountains on a blue sky day, dash, dash, no sun, dash, dash, AR, three, two. So I'm hoping that Midjourney is gonna create an image of mountains on a blue sky day, but not include a sun in the image, and the aspect ratio will be three, two. If you're not too familiar with aspect ratios, a simple Google search will tell you everything that you need to know. You'll also notice that I'm now generating images in a direct message with the Midjourney bot, and I'm no longer in one of the public channels which is something you're able to do as a paying subscriber. Here are the images that Midjourney came up with. As you can tell, there's no sun in our image of mountains on a blue sky day, and it's in the three to aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and try out the seed image parameter now. I'm gonna come back up here to our tropical beach image and copy the seed image number. Now my prompt says forward slash imagine tent on a tropical beach dash dash seed, then our seed image number, press enter. The seed image parameter doesn't always work as you would expect. It really just serves as a very rudimentary starting point for the new image that you're generating. As you can tell in this example, our new image of a tent on a tropical beach is similar to our initial image, but it's still quite a bit different. Perhaps the best use case of the seed image parameter is for when you're generating images of people or characters and you would like to keep a consistency. A few additional things worth knowing about Midjourney include the settings command. Just type in forward slash settings, then press enter twice. This will show you a list of additional settings and parameters that you can set with your Midjourney bot. Also the info command, forward slash info, press enter twice. And this will show you statistics regarding your account, such as the amount of runtime that you have remaining on your subscription. At the time of this recording, version 5 in Midjourney will generate the most realistic images. You can use version 5 by using the settings command and then selecting version 5 or by just adding the dash dash v5 to the end of your Midjourney prompts. Both of these images were generated using the same prompt. However, the one on the left was generated with version 4 and the one on the right was generated with version 5. Obviously, the one on the right looks much more realistic. Here are a few prompt examples and images that were generated with version 5. First, we have a vibrant image of a charcuterie board. Next is a medium shot of ultimate juicy bacon cheeseburger product shoot. By saying medium shot and product shoot, this is what gave us the close-up image of the cheeseburger. The prompt for this image is a United Airline Boeing 747 landing at Bergstrom International Airport in Austin, Texas. And this one is a Starbucks barista serving a cup of coffee with the Starbucks logo. If you have any other questions or would like to know the prompts of any of the images that I used in this video, just let me know down in the comments. If you got any value out of the video, feel free to go ahead and like it and subscribe. I'll see y'all next time.